we know that software is the competitive differentiator driving every business in every sector in one way or another. So every enterprise must evolve its software development and delivery processes in order to compete in this new world or face the prospect of being disrupted. So with this shift in focus comes challenges of accelerating this particular software delivery to meet the business goals of the enterprise. Simply getting insight into the efficiency of the process to deliver continuous improvement. And of course, measure the overall value. To really understand a value stream mapping, we first need to understand what a value stream is all about. So simply think about this. A value stream is simply a series of steps that occur to provide the product or service that your customer wants or needs, right? Now, whether this is an internal customer or an external customer, same thing. But the idea, the overall goal of value stream is simply just think of this as a series of steps that occur to provide the product or service to your customer, or whatever they want. So in order to provide that particular product or service that your customers desire, every organization has a set of steps that are required. That makes sense, right? So value stream mapping enables us to better understand what these steps are and where the value is added and where it's not. And more importantly, how to improve upon the collective process. So VSM also provides us with a structured visualization of the key steps. And of course, with each of these steps, we have the corresponding data needed to support and understand and intelligently make improvements so that all of the business processes or the workflows can be optimized and not just one section at the expense of the other, right? So it's really a stream, that's where the word stream comes in, right? It's not just one particular process, but it's the entire stream of all of these steps that you first need to identify as a consultant or as a IT practitioner or as an enterprise architect. And then once you've identified, you need to also correspond data to or relate individual data to that particular step. And then, of course, take all of these steps and create a stream or create a value stream. So by definition, a value stream mapping is basically a lean manufacturing or a lean enterprise technique, right? And we understand lean from previous lectures. It's eliminating waste processes, right? Simply put. So BSM is a lean manufacturing or lean enterprise technique used to document, analyze, and improve the flow of information or materials required to produce a product or service for your customers. So that's really what value stream mapping is all about. Now that you have a better understanding of what a VSM is, right? Because it provides us with a structured visualization, which means that as a consultant or as an enterprise architect, you have to get together with all of the stakeholders within the organization and then get them all on board on the same page, get them in the meeting room. And what I've done in my experience or the way I've conducted as an enterprise architect, VSM strategies is simply navigating to the conference room and there's a huge board and we all just uh, you know, team up together and each of us would simply put the actual steps on the board so we can visualize the entire value stream from start to finish. And that's really what that is. And of course, then we change and then we add uh, the corresponding data to each of those steps. And then we discuss and so forth. So it's a process, right? And that's really where the DevOps also comes into play because it's the development and operation. So we're not working in the siloed environment or individual environment. We're actually bringing all of these teams together into one conference room. Now, I know it happens because, you know, when all these people are together, they all come from the different mindset because you may have certain technical folks and then you may have certain individuals coming from the business environment or from the HR. So it's really a challenge. But at the end of the day, once you create a successful value stream, the output is phenomenal. 
the company and the organization is going to benefit. It's going to remove all of the redundant processes. And of course, I'm going to talk about in subsequent lectures, I'm going to demonstrate how to actually create a value stream. What are some of the tools and how do we use it? And you'll see it in action. So I hope you have a better understanding of the value stream itself. Next, let's take a look at the BSM. What's the purpose, right? So BSM is simply positioned to take over where the application lifecycle management leaves off. So during your SDLC or software development lifecycle or providing services or products, we're going to talk about how to elevate Agile plus DevOps with the value stream mapping. So the practicing BSM allows companies, organizations to make their Agile plus development and operations, DevOps, into a real digital business drivers. And that's really the reason of the popularity of DevOps because it combines both of these teams, brings them into one environment, and then streamlines the entire process from start to finish. So with VSM, what organizations are doing, basically they're implementing Agile plus DevOps, they will understand better the value that they deliver because they're not working in individual departments or teams anymore. They're bringing everything together. And the efficiencies they gain, and then of course the further optimization possibilities are endless for their development processes. So next, let's take a look at the simplified value stream map for software development. So now this gives you an illustration of what we just talked about in terms of what value stream map is all about. And here, you'll notice it's divided into three sections. So I'm gonna talk about each of these sections. The first section is the information flow itself. So with so much information packed into the value stream map, it's no surprise that there are terms and features that of course need some explanation, right? So you can understand better because at first, if you are a beginner enterprise architect or just starting off on this journey, this all may seem a little overwhelming, right? But not to worry, we're gonna break everything down and I'm gonna walk you step by step through each of these areas. While we provide some of the standardized VSM features, keep in mind that they may be modified to help achieve a specific objective. Now this is of course a standard model, so to speak, for the VSM in software development practice. To start, let's talk about the information flow, which is the first section. So what this section shows is simply the communication of process-related information. And not just the information itself, but the data that goes along with it, or the transmission of data. So in this particular example that you see here, the information flow where the release manager takes in all customer requests and then submits only the approved requests into the queue, which is the development queue. Now, depending on the objective or the goal of this particular mapping exercise, the information that is being collected and then distributed points shown that you see, such as uh, SharePoint that you see here, and then Excel you also see, can include many levels of details and many other integrated systems. Next category or next section is the product flow. Now this section simply maps the steps of the development lifecycle from concept to delivery, hence the term product flow itself. However, keep in mind that depending of course your own objective of your organization, this can be changed or refocused on specific sections of the process. You can make it as high level or as specific as required. Typically, by the way, it shows both the task being performed, which you see in the blue area, and the person or team performing the task. Now below these couple of boxes, you'll also notice other fields that show process data. So for example, if I want to simplify this, right, you'll notice data figures such as cycle time, you'll notice the setup time, so in practical use, the VSMs can include any number of data points in the section, by the way. This is just for representation so you can actually see and understand. So the yellow triangles, by the way, that you see simply show the queue of features waiting at each stage of the process. And the dotted arrows from one stage to the next are called push arrows, right? So simply just you know, the process going from one 
to the other. The third section is the time ladder. Now the time ladder simply provides a visual representation of the value stream timeline itself. The upper portion of the ladder represents the average amount of time that a feature spends in the queue or waiting at each stage, right, or within that process. The lower portion of the ladder would show the average amount of time that each feature was actively being worked on, right? So again, this is the area where you can simply see how long this is going to take or this activity or this project or this mini project is going to take for the enterprise architect to actually finish up and create deadline. So the terms such as cycle time that I mentioned earlier, setup time, are simple cycle time is simply the frequency of units or features, by the way, produced or an average time between the completed production of one unit or feature. The setup time is just the amount of time needed to prepare for a given step. The uptime percent will simply give you an idea of percentage of the total time that the processes or systems are actually active or taking. So the lead time is the measurement of the average amount of time needed for one feature request. And then the TAC time is a term that is commonly used, by the way, within the VSM area. And it refers to the rate at which you need to produce your products or service in order to meet the customer demand itself. So I hope this makes sense. You have a better understanding of the value stream for software development. The reason why I chose software development, because of course we're in the IT industry and that's what the course is all about as moving forward as an IT enterprise architect. So now you understand the three sections and what goes on each section and what they all mean. In the subsequent lectures, of course, I'm going to demonstrate and in depth detail out and demonstrate all of these areas once we move forward within the value stream. So just revisiting the enterprise architect skill set course, the number two I've added here is the value stream mapping. And some of the tools are GitLab, ZBA Labs, AWS DevOps. All these are pipelines, simply the, the process lifecycle, all of the tasks, all of the areas within the software development lifecycle that you can use. So remember or recall that the value stream mapping is just taking the individual step and then having the corresponding data attached to that step, to that process, and then taking all of those steps and then taking a look at or creating the stream itself. These tools, by the way, such as GitLab or Zebia Labs or the other companies out there, several other efficient DevOps platform that are, you know, or providers of the DevOps platform. Now, what they do is they give you the actual software or the backend to implement the pipeline. Whereas the value stream mapping is more of a management perspective where you need to evaluate the processes themselves and then kind of take a look at how they map to these tools. And other enterprise architect skills remain the same. So I hope this helps practice with this. Really understand VSM. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area. I'll be happy to answer. And with this, let's move to the next lesson.